You're listening to Jet Nation Radio, the official podcast of JetNation.com. The largest independent fan site in the NFL. Be sure to check out our forums and talk all things Jets with thousands of other diehard Jets fans. Now to get you up to date on all the latest Jets news, notes, and quotes, here are your hosts, Dylan Terriman and Alex Varallo. Perfect time for us to get into our mock draft 1.0 for 2022. Uh, so this is going to be the format tonight. It's just a, a couple quick picks. We're going to do the first round. We're going to do the second round. Um, you know, it's a little too early to try to, you know, foresee in our crystal balls what all seven rounds are going to be like for the Jets. But at this point in time, Dylan and I have selected particular players with the way the current roster is looking as of today, and we feel that this is the route the Jets should go to improve their team and make that jump from the bottom of the basement into a relevant football team. So I wish we had like a drum roll or something I could, you know, cue up here on the soundboard, but, uh, yeah, right. you know, we could do that. We could do that in our heads, I suppose. So, um, I'll kick it off. Um, I'm going to do my first two picks for the first round. Jets have the fourth pick overall. They have the 10th pick overall in this upcoming draft. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm consistent. Maybe I'm boring, but man, oh man, are people going to get tired of me talking about Ahmed sauce Gardner going to the jets at the four pick, bring me that lockdown corner, bring me, the cornerback that did not let up any touchdowns in his college career and is an absolute freak of nature when you're talking about a corner that is about 6'3", 190 to 200 pounds. He's got speed. He's got length. um, You know, he's got a good eye for the football. In his final season in college, he ended up with a few picks, three to be exact, three interceptions, four pass deflections, but quarterbacks did not like throwing toward Ahmad Gardner's way because usually it was going to be an incompletion or a problem. So lock it up at four for me with Sauce Gardner. And then at the number 10 pick, I'm thinking about Robert Sala here, Jermaine Johnson, edge from Florida State University. I really like what this kid brings to the table. I'll give you guys just a little bit of the stats here. Um, His total – Tackles for a loss loss in college. Um, he had 100 total tackles, 24 and a half were behind the line of scrimmage to go with 18 sacks. He had 11 and a half sacks last year, and on top of that, a couple pass deflections to go with it. I like the versatility of Tremaine Johnson, kind of being a stand-up linebacker. He can put his hand in the dirt. A six foot five, 260 pound beast, athletic as they come. And, uh, you know, I don't know if you want to say he's a speed or a power rush. I think he's got a really good blend, and I like what he brings to the table. I think at the 10th pick, it's an absolute slam dunk. So this one goes out to Robert Sala getting a lockdown corner and another pass rusher to throw in to the trenches with already what's looking to be a pretty stingy group. Dylan, hit us with your picks. All right, so – I went a little different. I know you went to defense, so I have to be the polar opposite apparently, and I have to go to offense. At fourth overall, and just to preface this, I didn't use any mock draft simulators. I'm just going off of what I believe could happen as a possibility, not saying it's guaranteed. So at fourth overall, I took Ika McQuanu, the offensive tackle from NC State. Uh, well documented that this guy has just been – generating so much buzz around the league. It happened at the Combine when he got to interview. Uh, Teams just really fell in love with him, and I've seen him go as high as one in mock drafts. I've seen him fall to either of the Giants' picks at five or seven. So I think four, if he's in that sweet spot, if, you know, the top three in the draft goes a little differently than, you know, the majority thinks, I think Ike McQuano has a really good chance of being there, and the Jets really shouldn't pass on him. Um, I talk about it, don't, don't, you know, do half measures, you have to really over correct a position rather than take a half measure. So obviously we don't know what happens with Mekhi Becton. We all, especially us here on Jet Nation, we want him to be 
the guy that he was when he was healthy in his rookie year, getting a ball deep breakdown of him every single week, Highway 77, get behind him and run. We all want that. But if it doesn't happen, we need to be prepared to not see Connor McDermott on Sundays. So Ike McQuanu, if he's the third tackle going into the season, truthfully, I'm okay with that. We needed three tackles last year. We needed really four, five, six tackles with all the depth that we lost. So Ike McQuanu, I would be really hard to pass up on Thibodeau at this pick, I'll be honest. So if they're both there, I'll be happy at e- with either one, but I had to go with Quanu. Um At 10 overall, again, I stuck with offense again. Jamison Williams, wide receiver from Alabama. And everybody's going to be like, oh, he tore his ACL in January. He's not going to be ready. And that's fine. I still think the second he steps on that field for whatever team, it's going to be just electric. He has so much speed. He's 6'1", 180 at the combine. So, Obviously, he's not going to play at 180. I think it'll be closer to like 187, 190, possibly even a little bit higher. I'm not quite sure. But he obviously lost weight not being able to work out from the ACL injury. So, Jamison Williams, his speed is well documented. Um, I think Alabama, quite frankly, would have had a much better time in the national championship if he played that whole game. I think he was on pace for like 170 yards. It was something ridiculous. So, Jamison Williams is is my guy. Uh, Garrett Wilson, also my guy here. But I think his skill set, speaking about Wilson, I think Garrett Wilson's skill set is too much like Elijah Moore's where the Jets will go after something different. And I think the Tyreek Hill trade kind of confirmed that for me, that they want a speed guy, even though Elijah Moore does have speed. But Jamison Williams is different speed. So those are my picks. Ike McQuanu, Jamison Williams. Yeah, you got to love it. I mean, you're talking about – bringing in another guy that can help, you know, the offense, keep everything stable, um, another body to go into the offensive line here, you know, does make a little bit of a conundrum as far as, you know, how this roster is going to pan out, um, you know, having that much talent at the tackle position and things like that, just really, really intriguing. And uh, I know a lot of people are very, very high on Icky. And um, I know Jameson Williams was, uh, you know, some people concerned about, you know, his health um, and his injury status. But, uh, you know, you want to talk about somebody that can absolutely fly, um, you know, probably going to be one of the more electric players when he gets to the next level. So very, very exciting Mm -hmm. there. Okay. So moving to the second round. Um, This one I'm a little bit more balanced. Uh, I'm still thinking about Robert Sala and our defense here. Um, At number 35 and number 38, those are our two second-round picks. Uh, Jets have four in the top 40. That's why this draft is going to be so exciting for this team. Uh, So for number 35, um, somebody I've talked about a few weeks ago, Alabama linebacker Christian Harrison. Um, You know, get another um, Alabama kid to go with our former um, Alabama Roll Tide guy, C.J. Mosley. You got two Bama backers, you know, one a little bit near the end of his career, one starting it off. I really would like to see the two of them come together. The athleticism is there. I think, you know, Harris can bring that sideline to sideline ability. Uh, you know, one thing that stood out to me out of the 80 tackles that he had last season, 11 and a half, excuse me, were behind the, um, line of scrimmage for a loss, and he also added five and a half sacks to go with that. So really, really like, um, you know, Christian Harris and the athleticism. I think he did pretty, pretty good last year, and everything that I've heard from him is that he's going to be, you know, probably an elite-style linebacker. Um, Jets definitely need help in that department. I love what Quincy Williams brings for a run defense, but I think that, you know, when you need somebody that can pick up a running back or pick up a tight end in a pinch or drop back in the zone and, you know, still have good game speed, I think Christian Harris brings that to the table. My other pick, um, you know, on some people's radars, not on everyone's radar, um, that's the number one wide receiver from North Dakota State University. Um, this is the guy that played with Trey Lance a couple of years ago. Um, I'm talking about Christian Watson the six foot five, two hundred ten pound wide receiver. The guy can absolutely fly. Uh, what he brings as far as stature, being a big body wide receiver, being able to, um, you know, take the uh, 
you know, the, the top of the defense off. Absolutely love it. Uh, I think it's, uh, it would be a slam dunk pick. Um, and what he would bring with our wide receiver group, I think it makes our offense absolutely dynamic. Um, to give you guys a little bit of what he's capable of doing, in 2019 he averaged 21 yards a catch. In 2020 he averaged 24 yards a catch. His most recent season was about 18.6 yards a catch. His career is about 18 to 19 yards, so you can see that he's got that, you know, deep down the field um, kind of presence going on here. And, uh, yeah, I really, really love what Christian Watson can bring to the table. Uh, so that would be my pick, my two picks, Christian Harris and uh, uh, Christian Watson. I guess there's a theme there for me as well. <laughs> that is funny. I didn't even notice that. Even as I read it, I didn't notice that it was two Christians. But I think those picks are great. I mean, whenever you can get a linebacker that runs a four 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 and a wide receiver that's six four and runs a four three six and they both broad jump eleven feet, I think that's you know, speed and explosiveness that this roster is significantly lacking. I haven't done my deep dive on Christian Harris, but I did on Watson because he was at the senior bowl. But I have a hard time thinking that Christian Watson is gonna fall outside of my top five linebackers this year, to be honest. And if he's even number three behind Dean and Lloyd, I wouldn't be surprised either. His game is just so fun to watch. Um, I was surprised. I thought I was waiting for the offensive player to come, and there it is. So everybody that was like, where's the offense? You guys can take a deep breath. And now with my mock draft, everybody's screaming, where's the defense? I have it right here. I have two edge, uh, two defensive players going at 35 and 38. Um, at 35, I took Boy Mafe from Minnesota. This is kind of a questionable pick for me. I don't know if he necessarily gets there to this pick. He's generating a lot of buzz, as most of these edge guys are. I tweeted it out a few weeks ago that I think we could see edge players going in the first round. So that's a quarter of the edge, the first round alone. Um, so Boy Mafe might not be here. But I also tweeted out that I, uh, the value of the Jets' two second-round picks is the equivalent to the 15th overall pick. So if they wanted to package 35 and – 69 or 117 or whatever we have in the fourth round and move up to the late one, I still wouldn't be surprised or mad at, at it either way. So Boy Mafe is my guy. He's a senior bowl player who kind of exploded at the senior bowl. Not many people were talking about him until that week. And he, he's very explosive, ran a 4 5 three forty, a 38 inch vertical. And he's 6'3, 261. So he's right in that kind of tweener of a outside linebacker in a 3 4. And a 4-3 D end. I think if you add like seven more pounds with his first step explosiveness, hand in the dirt, he could he could definitely play alongside Carl Lawson. And yes, it's not a top flight edge guy like Hutchinson, Thibodeau, Walker, Jermaine Johnson, but I think if you can get 80% of the player out of you know in in a later round that you could in you know round one, I think it's worth it. So Boy Mafe is my guy. And then at 38, I picked Daxton Hill, a safety from Michigan. Um, I know a lot of people aren't really on the let's go get a safety wave early, especially, but when all you have right now is LaMarcus Joyner and Ashton Davis and then a couple of depth rotational guys behind him, including a corner turned safety in his second year, I think you really need to hit the position early. They lost Marcus May, obviously, and he was a big piece. Uh, We saw when he went down against the Colts that the defense kind of took a hit. The safeties were taking bad angles in the run game. They were getting burnt over the top. So Daxton Hill does a little bit of all of that. He's rangy. He's fast. He can play man-to-man in the slot. He's really a matchup type player, but he's very rangy, and I think that's what sold me on him the most. I was really falling hard for Jalen Petrie out of Baylor at the Senior Bowl, and then I throw on Daxton Hill because everybody's talking about him, and and I just saw a little bit more out of him than I saw in Jalen Petrie. So I think Safety is a need personally on this team. I think they're very important in the defense. So Daxton Hill being versatile, but more of a free safety type of guy, I think that intrigues me a lot. You know, that that is, you know, a very, very uh, interesting, you know, scheme, the way you put that up, doing the two offense right off the bat, um, addressing the defense in the second round, still getting premier mm-hmm. players and positions that, uh, you know, that are still, you know, question marks here. Uh, We like some of the guys that we've brought in um, for the secondary. Um, But, you know, we have to think, you know, did we buy the stock when it's at its peak and now it's going to digress or is it going to continue to rise? 
Um, that's one of the biggest questions I've had with these free agent acquisitions. If you notice, Conklin had a career year. Uzama had a career year. Whitehead, the same. DJ Reed, the same. So uh, the Jets are buying in on players that are, you know, reaching that prime window. You know, did we miss that window or are we hitting it at the right time? So these are things that we'll, we will see this year once they deploy, you know, their starting lineups. And, uh, you know, the speculation is gone, and now we get to see what it really looks like on Sunday. So I definitely um, like the way you set up your mock draft there, addressing big deeds, um, getting young players for the long-term future. You know, at the end of the day, I think you could go – easily could go my way and we could easily, you know, be a little bit more balanced with the way that you had your uh, mock draft structured. So, you know, this is exciting. Um, We've officially kicked off um, what will be draft month, um, April 1st on uh, this Friday. So uh, yeah, we are here and it's just going to continue to get more and more exciting as the weeks go by. Awesome. All right. This is Alex Ferralo and Dylan Terriman signing off. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Um, Have a great week and a a better weekend, and we will see you uh, possibly sooner than later, but if not, next Tuesday, 6.30 p.m., Jet Nation Radio. Everybody, be safe, have fun, and as always, let's go Jets. Thanks for listening. Be sure to follow us on Twitter at Jet Nation Radio. Glenn is at AceFan23 and Alex is at NY Jets Life 24. Until next time, go Jets.